Uh, some of you might already know that I had quite an eventful Sabbath. Uh, she's doing well, thank you. Um, she had a, a bad case of vertigo when she got up this morning, and she dearly wanted to come and you know see this program, so she forced herself to come when she should have gone back to bed. And uh, as a result, we had to take her to the emergency room and get her stabilized, and they did the CAT scan and some blood work, and everything's okay, but uh, I took her home about uh, the time this program started and raced back in here to, uh, to be with you. So uh, I'm thankful for that. Uh, Bob uh, Caldrick mentioned the name Charlie Menser, and in your uh, pamphlet that Gordon made up, there is that letter that Charlie Menser wrote, uh, basically telling people to be open-minded and don't, uh, you know, don't be prejudiced against what's taken place in the armory. I don't think Bob realizes that uh, my grandmother was a Menser. Uh, Charlie Menser is my cousin. He didn't attend any church, and I think he alludes to that in that, in that article. Uh, but he was a very nice man. Uh, when we would see him on the uh, police force beat, on Saturday night, um, my parents would always stop and talk to him. Very cordial, uh, very professional individual. But I am positive that um, his letter was written in February of 1946. The meetings had already been going on for about a month. And I am positive that my parents attending those meetings circulated, the word circulated around the Menser family. So I think that that might have been the connection that, that in the back of Charlie Menser's mind, uh, persuaded him to do what he did. Now, I can't be positive because I never ask him about it, but, and unfortunately he's deceased now, but he built a little brick home uh, just off of Clayton Avenue on 3rd Street, the first, the first brick home, a uh, good old little uh, bungalow there. Uh, for himself, uh, just he and his wife, they never had any children. And, um, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the last I know of him. But he was part of the Menser family, Menser Gap Road. You know, at one time, there was only two Adventist families on Menser Gap Road, us and the Mikulskis. Now the, the Mikulskis are, you know, that family's not living there anymore, and my, my home is, is on Menser Gap Road. So that's the last remnant of, of Adventists on Menser Gap Road. Hopefully we can get more, but uh, that's been the history from the start of this church to now. There's been other Adventists in the area. Some, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about this. <laughs> well, Lee Ditch is there now, yes. So it, there you go, it has increased, hasn't it? <laughs> Thanks for correcting me, Tina. <laughs> I, I just don't look at her as living on Metzger Gap Road for some reason. <laughs> but she's there. <laughs> like the first uh, two gentlemen that spoke, uh, Bob and Richard, before me, I am a second generation Adventist. I am the last of seven children uh, born to Margaret and Charles Gunder, uh, both of whom were charter members of this church. Uh, and were baptized uh, along with my older brother and sister by Elder Veach in May 1946. Unfortunately, I'm the only one of seven uh, that stuck with it, uh, that uh, you know stayed with the church. The other, my older brother and sister, they got married, and basically, I think their spouses pulled them the opposite direction. Uh, my parents uh, were longtime members of the Blue Rock United Brethren Church. Um, which is only natural because the original church stood across from our home, uh, across the road from our home, across Mincer Gap Road, and was actually uh, a piece of the farm property that the church was built on. However, for some unknown reason to me, and you know, this is the sad part about we never ask our parents these details when they're alive, and so we can only presuppose. But in the mid-1940s, they must have come under uh, a strong conviction. I don't know, that Sunday was not the Sabbath because they migrated to the Seventh-day Baptist Church over at the nunnery. 
And my first recollection of attending church as a very small child was at the nunnery. I remember them baptizing in the, old, the cold old creek over there. And I distinctly remember a visiting preacher by the name of, I think, uh, first name Lowell, I think his last name was Weikert. Wingert, Weikert, something like that. Carrying me asleep up the steps to my home after some meetings uh, that were held over there at the church, most likely in 1945. A little later on, I remember tuning into the snowy TV that you had in the beginning. You know, you had a little TV screen and there was nothing but a picture with snow, full of snow there. And I remember seeing this same man on Channel 6, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And he was a very distinctive character because he had a beard, no offense, Dave, but he wore a robe like you see the pictures of Jesus, you know, painted pictures, and it looked like he was trying to emulate the Jesus. But he had a half-hour program on uh, Johnstown TV, probably one of the first televangelists <laughs> that was, uh, you know, we ever heard of. Um, in January 1946, my parents, along with, you know, some of the others that you heard about here, decided to attend the meetings at the armory uh, that were being held by Harold Veach. And as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> it really is. Now, unlike the first two gentlemen that spoke before me, I am not a charter member. Oh, I was likely present from the very beginning when the church was organized in 1946 and the first series of baptisms took place, but I don't remember anything about it. You see, even though I was here, I was in a state of bliss being carried around in the arms of my parents and enjoying my third year of infancy. Now, I do remember in the cobwebs of my mind at about the age of five, seeing what appeared to be monstrous trucks coming in our farm gate through the, pa through the barnyard and up into our middle pasture field and hauling huge stones from a fence row. I remember standing there as a lad inside the chicken yard and watching these, these trucks move and recalling, my, those trucks were, were huge. Of course, I was a little three-year-old, so then I, I'm sure they were smaller than what we see today. And as I recall, those trucks belonged to Shorty Hamner, who was a, a local well-known excavator in the area the same man who later operated the gas station out west of town here that stands idle today, just across the Antietam Bridge, leaving Waynesboro to the west. And I also have a picture someplace in the archives, archives of my study, I couldn't find it, I looked high and low for it, that shows my older brother Paul and my dad up on scaffolding out front here, in the front section of the church, putting those used stones in place. So today, as we celebrate 70 years of existence in, in, of this church here in Waynesboro, looking back on my life, I have been a Sabbath school member here all 70 of those years, but only a church member for 59 of those years. Because in 1957, I was baptized right here in a baptismal tank, very much like the one you see behind me, only that was in the floor. <laughs> In 1962, I married Laura Kendall, and early in our marriage, we attended both here and at Blue Rock United Brethren Church, where she was a member. When our daughter Tina was born in 1963, we became more regular attendees here. And one day in June of 1965, as best I can tell it was, my wife invited her pastor from the Blue Rock Church to come to our home so she could confront him with the Sabbath question. I remember very distinctly the meeting in our living room and her asking him directly, which day is the Sabbath? And unlike most pastors since that I've heard speak today and been confronted with that question and failed to give an honest answer, he spoke the truth. His exact words were, if you want to go by the Bible, then Saturday is the Sabbath. But in the same breath, he looked at me and he said, why don't you come to our church and join your, your brothers and sisters there? 
Well, that settled it for my wife. From there on, she took Bible studies uh, that were uh, given to her by Elder Snow, and she became active in children's division, teacher and leader in the church. And I became active in the adult Sabbath school and later uh, an elder at age 28. I thank the Lord, we, you know, we say, well, you know, we haven't grown, but, and, and a lot of people have moved away and they're, they've produced Adventists in other places and so we don't know the number uh, only, only God knows the number that have been produced. Uh, Adventists have been produced that way. But my kids stayed local. They're all here, uh, all three of them. And they're all active in the church, which is the more important Amen. aspect of it. Amen. I thank the Lord every day for these three, Chris, Tina, and Corey. And, of course, my dear wife, because she's the one that's instrumental in uh, making sure that, uh, you know, the early childhood training uh, and showing them what the love of God looks like through, the, through their mother. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for my seven grandchildren as well. I don't want to fail to mention them because uh, they're all members of the church. Uh, not not active, uh, but their name is on on the rolls. Uh, most of them are are active, and my hope is that should time last, that my children and their children will continue with the same level of commitment to this church that my wife and I have shown over these past 54 years. I truly believe this is God's remnant church. That the Adventist message is God's last day appeal to mankind to come out of Babylon and as it says in Isaiah for us to build up the old waste places to raise up the foundations of generations to restore the paths to dwell in and that we can be called the repairers of the breach may God make us men and women as Ezekiel says I sought a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap. May he continue to bless this church infused with third and fourth and fifth generation Adventists along with new blood and new ideas continue to shine as a beacon on a hill. Thank you very much.